Tracy. All right. Welcome to the Reality Roundtable. We're here with Jane Lynch, Guy Fieri, Mark Cuban, LL Cool J, Mike Darnell, Nick Cannon, and I'm your host, Lacey Rose. And we're going to dive right in. So I'm hoping to start with some stories here. What's the wildest thing that's happened on one of your shows, whether it's made it to air or it hasn't? Well, mine made it to air. Um, I was dry humped by Martin Short. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know anything nearly that good, so I'll just <laughs> oh, oh, start no. kind of down here and down no. there uh -huh. at the same time. Raise the bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. Uh -huh. Yeah, nothing that good. I mean, we had somebody pass out on Shark Tank and we couldn't air it. Guy walks up, starts to do his pitch, and then gets a little bit woozy. You know, we're like, you okay? And then, bam. Uh -huh. Just fell over. Couldn't take it. Passed out. He was done. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I don't know. It was just, you know, I've just been having so much fun on lip sync. I don't know. I've watched the show. You could just say for the next hour everything. I mean, it, I mean, it was, it was a, a lot, a lot of things, you know, because a lot of things happen, you know, but people nothing come. that we weren't with yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know I want too. all of it on yeah, TV. Put it on TV. Uh, you, know? uh, you can go back way in the vault here. <laughs> well, no, you know, I mean, those of you who don't know my past, I did a lot of, all my shows were so crazy that I literally put everything on air. When animals attack, police chases, uh, when good pets go bad, um, you know, every show had something crazy. Can I tell you how much it. I love when animals attack? Thank you very <laughs> much. I love, yo, Thank I'm you. telling you right now, right. yo, I love that. I heard like, stage, you see some lady sitting next to a bear or something, and okay, she's not looking, something. <laughs> the bear like gets shot. That's it. The dude with the karate out trying to hold the bear back. I did I did a show called, that a lot of people saw called Man vs. Beast. So we had humans. Going against bad. So well, the one thing I wanted was a runner to go against the giraffe. Mm -hmm. I thought that's interesting. <laughs> Except uh, the horse knows he's supposed to race. The giraffe doesn't know. <laughs> so we're like honking horns and spraying a little water, anything to get him to get nothing, zero. I'm like, okay, what are we? So then we ended up with a zebra. But I was very unhappy with that. I felt like that dress would have been very well, interesting. Who won the race? You should put a, a lion um, behind him in a yeah. kill, right? <laughs> the zebra won motivation. the race. You know what I also had on that same show I had? The guy that was the current hot dog eating champion, Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Right. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's, not, he's not the leader anymore. No, no, he, but no, 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 and just, How'd you like to sell him oh, to the bowl? Yeah, 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 right? Oh, That's so, a business in and of itself, baby. So we did have some crazy stuff. So really, literally, uh, there was almost nothing that could possibly go wrong. That we didn't Amazing. Yeah. Right. Like Mike, I mean, the shows that I'm on, people do the craziest things. Like, when you think about America's Got Talent, that's the whole thing. So I, where do I begin? I've had people stick drills in their nose. Uh -huh. Just this season, I had a, there's a 95-year-old stripper oh. who, who was on the pole, oh. uh, <laughs> and I helped her on the pole. Yeah, nice. Of course, that's what I'm supposed to do, I'm the host. I had yeah. to make sure everything was going. And you were the one who found her, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I'm the one that wasn't on the show. Yes. Listen, so you're too old for this, but maybe we could put you on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, at a, uh, I'm at a diner, and I'm, uh, so we're not shooting. We're having a kind of a rap meeting with the production team. And there's these two ladies sitting across the way from us. And they're having a discussion that I'm supposed to be hearing, but they're not looking at me. And they're having a discussion of who's the bigger fan. And they really kind of get into a heated argument. And this one's talking about, well, I know his kid's names. And I know where he lives in the wine country. He goes back and forth. It's getting and finally, creepy. Finally, the, oh, yeah, I guess it gets real <laughs> creepy. And it's in the South, so there's a little accent in there, too. And finally, the one lady gets up from the booth and pushes away from the table. And I think she said, like, Mabel. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm his biggest fan. I know everything about Gus Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Gus. Now, okay, don't worry about getting the name right. I love the heat in the burger. The bacon, you've cooked it down enough to where you get the texture of the bacon, you get the flavor of the bacon, and then you get this tender burger, which you've been able to cook medium rare. Brother, I'm telling you, it's a simple dish, but it has to be executed the right way. It's kind of like a play. If you just do what you're supposed to do and commit to what you're supposed to do, you're gonna make it happen. You made it happen, man. That's that's outrageous. What's the key to a, a, the dream contestant on an unscripted show? Fearless, like yeah. mentality of just like they're they're there for them. 
<laughs> like I, the I, selfishness I, of it all. <laughs> I think it's people that just don't take themselves too seriously and just want to have fun. People that had a lot of coffee. You know? yeah. Or drank some, <laughs> yeah. had some booze in their coffee. Those are my favorite. But I'm guessing they, there's, they there's, there's there is probably a spectrum, and too far in the coffee or booze, mm. and we yeah, yeah. 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 no, no, I think that's thing. true. I think we've, we've had that on Hollywood Game Night because we do. Uh, give them drinks. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've got celebrities and then we've got uh, regular people, uh -huh. normies. It's, <laughs> normies. The people who aren't celebrities, it helps if they're not starstruck or drunk. Mm -hmm. So there, I mean, we've had some really great people who kind of show up and they really play as a team with the mm -hmm. celebrities. And we have had to cut people off celebrities and some yeah. of the uh, normal folks coming in. So uh -huh. sometimes that works against us. It loosens people up. But Cut them off of what is the question? A, a, a scotch, <laughs> whatever their drink is. Yeah. Water it down a little you know, bit. We, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, almost all the contestants on all shows go through a psych test. Right. Which uh, goes from a one to a five, right? Okay, so I know it's five worst. And they always were... You know, well, this guy's a four and a half. I'm like, it's great. It's as close as you can get to a five. Yeah. Let's get him on the air. It's almost never bad, especially according to what show you're doing. If you're doing Bachelor or Bachelor, they can be nuts, right? You want them to be crazy. Um, and I think even the talent contests, you know, uh, the more open, the more emotional. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a breed that's meant to be on these shows yeah. anyway, right? Sure. And they know it. It's kind of like guys that like to bungee jump, there's an X factor in there, right? And so there's an X factor in these things. And I think that you're looking for, it is very rare in my career that I've ever had someone show up and go, too much. Uh, it's just almost <laughs> never a time. We have a show you can go on somewhere. Just hang on. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It's right. <laughs> it's right. What, is, what does the psych test entail? It's a written test and a verbal test. Mm -hmm. Uh, there might be some drawings on it. I'm not sure. Like, uh -huh. like um, the and, Rorschach. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, we've had ones and twos. They're okay. And but they don't make it to the shows. Yeah, you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta have threes and fours. And it's some... So you're not looking for Mr. Spock? No. You... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so what you don't want. That's the right. exact opposite. The psych, the psych lady who's on site all the time literally is sitting there yeah. because some of the people who come off right. don't get just are destroyed. Mm -hmm. So there's been people who walk off crying, oh. screaming, <laughs> you guys yelling. Are counseling at the end of it? There's counseling. Oh, yeah. that's oh my God. Most of the shows have I'm the counselor. Yeah. America's got talent. No, so you see them walk down the hall. We always had a psychologist on set. Got you. All the idols, everything. Huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. yeah, they'll walk down the hall and like, so we're sitting there and no, you didn't get a deal, right? And we'll just hear a wailing or screaming or yelling. And then, you know, it's like <laughs> other shows, you come off and there's crap. We're, we're, we're done, right? Right? Laugh, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> it just depends, right? <laughs> but you don't have like four X's on your show. <laughs> <laughs> right? no, no, millions shows. of people, right? But but remember, these people are coming, this is their dream, right? They put their whole life into oh, this. Yeah. Well, Every penny that they have is mm. just gone, mm. if we, you know? And they may be out of business, you know, they lose yeah. their house, whatever. And so they yeah, come out true. of there just wailing and just dying. So we come out, you know, and we're out going to craft service, and then our psych lady, you can just see her come back. Uh, yeah. well, but usually die, a day, two days later, they're okay. They're okay. They know they're yeah. going to be on television. They know they're and that's right. what, yeah, yeah, saying, like, yeah. the people yeah. who are built for this. There's people who, like, are fearless, who are like, hey, I'm I'm here to be on television, mm -hmm. and I'm here to play along. Those you are the people you get everything out of it. Yeah, especially, like, on America's Got Talent, because, in this, you know, like Mike said, there's certain levels of people. There's some people that actually really believe that they're talented, but they're <laughs> those not. Those are the best, though. They're, yeah. they're authentic, so right? So those yeah. are the ones that psych has to kind of be a little delicate uh -huh. with them. I have to be done because I'm not there to make fun of them, but it's like clearly, you know, you playing straws is not going to win you a million dollars. But not? that's all they know and that's all they have. So you have it's a delicate balance of all right, these these people are almost at a five, uh -huh. but <laughs> you still they're still people and they're still humans. And you want to handle them with respect. Yeah. All right, so if you guys could be a contestant on any show, what would you do? I wouldn't. Oh, I was on dance. I was on, da on Dancing with the Stars, that's right. yes. oh, and awesome. it was one of the best things I've ever done. Mm. Right, literally the scariest thing I've ever done. How so? Walking out there in front of 22 million people, you know, having to do fucking waltz, you know, <laughs> or, you know, the, the quick step that or the whatever. the bomb of the show? Yeah, yeah right? I, this one, I mean, yes. seriously, I mean, just, it was the scare. I mean, I'm usually, I usually don't get nervous or scared or whatever. Mm. I was terrified, right? And it's just like, you go out there and you just let her rip. Mm -hmm. And then you get like the judges, you know, the four <laughs> X's and, and I got lots of X's, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, but it, it was fun. Did it, it change the way you then judged going forward? Not really. I mean, this is before Shark Tank and everything, right. but um, no, I mean, it was just, I, I had a greater appreciation for ballroom dance, but it was just <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, was, it was hard, but yeah. just 
you know, I, I understood more what a contestant mm -hmm. goes through, right? Because you, you just have to wing it. You just have to prepare and go for it. But uh, it, I, it was one of those experiences that was the scariest thing I've ever done, hmm. but I loved it. I mean, I might do a game show. Like, that's okay. Yeah, that would, yeah. That, you yeah, know, yeah. That's about it. I think, you know, watching these over the years and doing it for 20 years, <laughs> it's scary. You know, I, opening your life up like that is, I don't know. I was not on that's how I yeah. got into, That's how I got into TV. Sure. It was on the Food Network Star. And I don't I don't watch a lot of TV as a chef and a restaurant owner. I'm you know spending all my time in the in the kitchen. And all my buddies told me about this show. They had seen it and they said you're going to be perfect for this. And I think the only reason they wanted me to do it was just to see me go on and you know get you know, get voted yeah. off. <laughs> and so I did it and I'd never even seen the show. Um, and I don't think I would have done it had I seen the show. <laughs> but I went and did it. I won it. And that's how this whole thing kind of you know this snowballed. But uh, it's it definitely gave me a different perspective because you see how many people are putting. So many, like in your show, I mean, so many people putting their lives on the line. And yeah. so when I work with these mom and pop joints in my show's called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, um, I, I, I see them sometimes in financial, you know, peril. And I see them sometimes where they really have to make it happen. And then, and it's great to shine the light on them like that, but it, it definitely changed my perspective. Mm. So you guys talked about sort of what scares you as contestants. What scares you in, in making these shows? What sort of makes you nervous? Well, you know, for me, um, you know, doing lip sync battle, it's, uh, I just want to make sure that the, because of our contestants for the most part are, you know, A-list celebrities. And, um, I just want to make sure they have a good time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I want people to see them in a different light, but at the same time, I want to be respectful of that. I don't want to like, you know, I don't want them to walk away feeling bummed out, like, mm -hmm. oh, oh my God, I just sacrificed my entire career <laughs> and hung out with LL Cool J and uh -huh. Chrissy uh -huh. Teigen. Uh -huh. Like, I want them to, you know, so for me, it's just really, I just want them to play and have a good time and give, you know, fans around the world and people around the world an opportunity to see them in a different light, in a way they've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. It's so lovely a bit to be here tonight on the Lip Sync Battle Show. I have been begging to be here, and I finally <laughs> made it! What just happened? Yes. This whole show is such animalistic love. You are not on LSD. You are on LSD. <laughs> what scares me about that is just the idea of them walking away feeling like, yeah, like, you know, LL Cool J ruined my career. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. You know Do you feel like that's happened? Well, I don't think it's happened, but I, you know, um, there have been some, some, uh, you know, contestants who haven't won, and I don't think they were necessarily happy about uh -huh. it. And I don't think they were like, you know, they weren't like going to fail a psych test or you know, they weren't about to jump. I think right. they, they have careers, but uh -huh. I think you know, when you deal, when you're dealing with people at a certain level, obviously they want to win. Really? Like, everybody here is a very successful person. So successful people like to win. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not in it to lose yep. at, at anything. So, you know, that kind of affects everybody, you know what yeah, I mean? I'd love to come sure. on your show and just bomb. If that's available, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm your guy. Come on and work yeah. it, You always say, oh, I, I, I didn't win on your show, and I don't even notice, because right. it's all See? about having fun. See? Yeah. You didn't win what? Oh, you don't have to win. <laughs> I, I blew the final round. I don't remember that. Nobody remembers yeah, that. Yeah, but LA, do they care about um, winning, or is that, did I look stupid? I think it's yeah. both. I think it's both. I think it's both. Stupid. I think it's both. I think I know. Did I look stupid? But, but remember, because that's all I care about. Did I, I look stupid? Is losing, right? <laughs> right like right. a lot of times, right. it's like it can, stupid. It you look stupid yeah. because yeah. you lost. Like that's what they think, but they right. don't realize that people enjoy them so much. Right. They're just right. so right. happy One to see them. Mm -hmm. They're just so happy that there is no loser because it's people are just so happy to see their personalities, to see how much fun they're having. You know what I mean? And you, that you can't real. lose. You Absolutely. Can't lose. All right. So, what's the most frustrating trend to have emerged in the genre in recent years? Mm. Of, of like reality competition yeah. shows, or uh, yeah, unscripted at large, or just in R life. Ringers. Yeah. Ringers. Ring oh, ringers. Yeah. In the food world, in food competition shows, we have people that have been on in multiple mm -hmm. shows. Taking the rounds. Then they come in with a little, I know how production works, and I got these <laughs> things, like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I gotta... So that's a little tough. Well, arrogance yeah. is frustrating, period. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's just, well played. Yeah. So. I think in reality, in general, it's the lowest common denominator type mm -hmm. thing that we're trying to appeal to, and the freakier, the better, and the... You know, what's wrong with that? I like that. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I might be alone here you know, on an island. You know, yeah. I think there's a little exploitation. I think the worst, yeah, yeah. yeah, for me, the worst trend is no innovation. Uh, people going back to stuff that was 15 years ago or 12 years ago, and I think anything gives the genre a bad name. It's that sense of there's a lazy, it's kind of a laziness mm -hmm. about some of the shows, and yeah. you feel like, oh, this is just Survivor done for the 18th time, and I think the audience 
is tired of it. They want to see something new or at least something that tries to be new, a twist yeah. or something. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you've, been, you've been all over the genre. You've done all different types of sub-genres within right. the reality landscape. Is there anything that sort of frustrates you or disturbs you about what's sort of gone on? Probably the same thing we were saying because to me, I'm, I consider myself a creative and I'm always in these uh, people's offices like, 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 yo, let's do something completely different. <laughs> and it's, they're more likely to green light stuff that has worked on another network with a right. small little mm -hmm. twist. And it's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want, you know, I want to do, you know, like even I remember trying to convince the people at MTV to do a, a hip hop improv show and they were like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and like, so I had to go with my own money, uh -huh. shoot it myself, and then present it. And then I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. This has never been done on television before. And you know, now hundreds of episodes later, it's like, OK, now you see all these other people trying to do mm -hmm. what we did, which, mm -hmm. I mean, it's flattering. But at the same time, like, I like to be in a field where I see others being creative. That sure. I'm, I'm on a business show. Right. 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 I mean, when I went on, I went on as a guest, right? And they had been bounced from Tuesday night to Sunday night, then on Friday night, which was death, mm -hmm. right? And then it, it just caught fire. But, you know, we're getting knocked off. You know, it's like, how uncreative <laughs> can you possibly be? On your own network. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right. yeah, it's just like... Yeah, fish tank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Come in and sell. Yeah, <laughs> tank, right? What can you I mean, sell? Yeah. Yeah. Tank. Right. Well, that's a trend. And that's yeah. okay if you can come up with a really good knockoff can work. Yep. It's less about that and more about just like, it's almost like there's, it feels exhausted at the moment where mm -hmm. it keeps going back and back mm -hmm. and back and back. And that's why it's important to come up with. Well, it's tougher now, just trying to get people to watch TV, right? That's right. So much, yeah. 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 So yeah. what can't you get away with that you used to be able to get away with that sort of bums you out? <laughs> what bums Mike <laughs> Darnell? Yes. Well, I think the difference is, when I was at Fox, I was the buyer. Mm -hmm. And I think I was the only person willing to buy those shows. Right. And so now I'm selling, I can't, I have those ideas, but no one will buy There's them. There's no you. So that's the right, right. I'm it's not like, out there uh -huh. I think that's the frustrating part for me. I'm still happy to get successful television shows mm -hmm. on, but I, there's, little edgy, controversial stuff that um, very difficult to sell right now. Uh-huh, because there's, Cause there's no you on the other end of yes. the <laughs> other side of the table. That's true. All right, so Unreal obviously has come on in the last year and it has depicted sort of reality producers as a heartless bunch, uh, to say the least. Is that show fair or is it utter fantasy? I would say, I mean, being someone who has kind of been on every aspect of it, because I, like I said, as an actor and as a musician, we always like, hey, we never do reality. Mm -hmm. And you know, I remember those few years back, your agents was like, why would you even consider that? And I was like, I don't care, I'm gonna do everything. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen it to where as someone, as a producer, I never wanna take advantage of people and I always wanna be honest because I've been in those positions to where it's like, man, they're trying to depict you this way. It shows that I've produced that I'm actually on camera and the people that I hired are like trying to get me. I was like, <laughs> you work for me. Like, like <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to get some information out of me that I'm gonna kill in the edit anyway. So <laughs> it, it, but it's like, it's this mentality of they're, they're creating a story. Mm -hmm. So they don't really, they're not really thinking about the person a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So every show that I produce, uh, specifically in a docudrama, I want people to be true to themselves and be able to sit back and watch it and be happy what we present it because it gets it gets a little messy at times you know, and I'm I'm really not with that. You know, I, I, I agree with that and I understand that, but I think, you know, <laughs> you know, once you sign a deal, like, you know, <laughs> you, you, did, yeah, you did sign that deal, right? Like, like you sold anytime, your soul. Yeah, because yeah. When you, <laughs> you know, check any, clears, right? Anybody, like, and, and we're talking, mind you, I want to I qualify this remark. I'm not talking about, you know, the post office or, you know, real life. We're talking about this entertainment right. Hollywood world, right? Sure. right? When you sign a deal, like, you hear somebody complaining about their salary, you, you did agree to that, right? <laughs> like, you, you did sign a deal, like, you, you said... Right. As you're complete, you did agree to that salary, right? Yeah, like, you were so, so excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, you signed it, right? You did, you did, you really did, did, deal. Yeah. you did agree to that, right? Like, yeah. if I confused... You didn't sign in the dark. Like, right. You, you yeah. did agree to that. So, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of like... That's the of, expectation, I think, that people going into reality now have. They become instant celebrities, yeah. and yeah. they think mm -hmm. that should be monetized, and right. they should be... They try to figure know, it out. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. so you get a lot of these people who really... Are, you know, like the whole Housewives franchise, you know, they they become these huge celebrities and they start to become kind of crazy themselves. Yeah. As if maybe yeah. they were crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's business. But they you are not really be... doing anything, you know, and they... they Some you know. people are, are gifted at capturing value. Mm -hmm. I tell my contestants you know? <laughs> on, on this one show, I tell them, I say, when you come on here, do not plan on winning. 
Well, just get that out of the way right now. <laughs> because one of you will win and three of you will go home. I said, I don't right, want right. you to be caught in this. I said, so why are you really here? And I, I get them to the point of saying, I'm here for the experience. I'm here to um, say hi to my kids on TV. I'm here, whatever. And I said, I want you to remember this. Win or lose, you will watch this show, and I do not want you to be embarrassed in front of how you behave. It's a cooking show. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, just be yourself. If you don't drink coffee, don't drink coffee before the show. If you don't drink, don't drink before the show. You know, be yourself and, and, and be mm -hmm. real about that. And we try to edit as yeah. real as possible, just like you're saying, Nick. But you know what? There's always that little thread that might get picked up by a producer where they want to make a little right. bit more out of it. Because it's drama. It's a it's a drama. Still People love this story. You've got to make a dramatic yeah. well, no, but that's TV. On a Shark Tank, that's the part I hate the worst right. because the reality is always crazier than what a with producer is going to come yeah. up with mm -hmm. and what they try to edit that's together. True. And they try to manufacture some stuff, and I go nuts. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding? Okay, I want you to walk in. We're going to do this pickup, right? We're going to do a follow-up, right? And I want you to walk in and look at this display of T-shirts. And make, it's like the best display of T-shirts. I'm like, I'm just gonna walk in. <laughs> it's a good display of T-shirts. <laughs> I'm gonna ask it's how fun. business is, yeah, right? Because yeah. if yeah. I'm walking in going, oh my god, the right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. It's yeah. ridiculous, and, right? You know. Sensationalism sells. Well, yeah, it does. But, but at the no, end look, of the day, these are television shows. If it was me running against the zebra <laughs> or a lion, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, on Lip Sync Battle, I try to, you know, as a producer on Lip Sync Battle, I try to protect the guests. Yep. You know, I want to protect them. So mm -hmm. you got to you know. see them outside of that. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I want, you know, yeah. I just the same you know. way with wilding out. It's like yeah. my thing because we're there to humiliate them. We want, I'm there to destroy you, which is different. <laughs> but yeah. that's different, and that's cool. Yeah, because it's so much fun, and that's great, right? But it's I still a, don't. It's a line like, ooh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I gotta control all yeah. these crazy young comedians. It's like, yeah, they'll get into their personal. Yeah, lives I remember and... one time I, we, Kanye was on the show, and uh, we specifically before the show is like. Yo, don't m mention anything about his, because this was when he was young, like about mm -hmm. the car accident and his face. They and went right that, there. That stuff. And then literally one comedian, the first thing he grabbed the mic. <laughs> Brando. And, and he was Marlon like. Marlon Brando, yeah, immediately. Yeah, he yeah. was like, oh. your face looks like a chipmunk. From being Jay-Z's punk and all this oh, stuff. Man. Oh. But then Kanye handled it like a professional and destroyed him right there. Uh -huh. yeah, and well. that makes for good television at Great the end of the day. Great television. It's a classic episode. But I, was like, him. I didn't know if Kanye was still going to be my friend after <laughs> yeah, that. Right? He had, he, if, if he would have lost, it probably would have been a different story. But he murdered everybody, so it turned out good for everyone. All right, so one of the genres that has sort of emerged and is done very well is the sort of kids' space. Does that make you nervous, or do you feel like the industry can handle it? I hope so, because, you know, when you're over 18 and you step into this stuff and you're a... You're an idiot. <laughs> That's one thing. But when you're just a kid, and you, yeah, you gotta I be careful with that. Careful with that. And it's animals, really kids and animals, don't do it. When we did, I think ho even Hollywood knows when to draw the line. You do. You, yes. you trust no. Hollywood. I don't know about that. No, with, with, little <laughs> with, little with little kids. With little kids. A friend. I have a 12 year old daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. One of her friends is on the track. Mm -hmm. Left school. Mm -hmm. Went with her parents out to L. A. Modeling or TV. Music and TV. Oh, yeah. music, no. no music, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. music, yeah, yeah. Music and both, right? Yeah, but music is different. No, 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 music has no line. There's no rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None, right? But, well, well, yeah. you know, but they're going to do this show or that show, and, you know, you know how they get pimped out. Oh, we're going to make you a star. We're going to put you on this show, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's scary. Well, what I mean by Hollywood knowing to draw the line, and I agree with what you're saying, is that hopefully your parents have your best interests at heart, and Hopefully. have some experience yeah. because a dadager or a momager <laughs> with no experience yeah. can be as the bad disaster. for your career as it is, you know, as a great manager could be good for your career, yep. right? But as long as they have people around them that are trustworthy and really insulate them, there are a lot of protections in place on the television side to make life really good yeah, for there, kids. There are rules, there are rules. There are rules. Yeah, on, the, on the television yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you're talking yeah. about music, <laughs> man, listen, listen, yeah. listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. You, you're coming there and your kid, your kid will be in a, a hammock, a hashish, <laughs> like going back and forth. <laughs> look, mommy, look what they gave me as a gift. You know what I mean? The remix. <laughs> you, know, like, like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, I you know. Yeah, my thing, I always go to it because they're, they're there to have fun. When mm -hmm. you're a child, you just want to have fun. When mm -hmm. it starts to become work, mm -hmm. that's when it goes wrong. And I get <laughs> sad a lot of times when you see these kids that are there, like, they don't want to be there. They want to be playing. They you encounter that, Mike? Ice cream. Well, what? no one knows this at the table, but I was a child actor for, uh, you know. I knew that. For like a dozen years. What show? I think you oh did God, tell I me that. Back. Oh my I think God. 
too. did have this I want to hear this. Yeah, we yeah. Jack, Sanford and Son, Knott's Landing. I mean, I'm a coach. I remember your coach. Oh, my God. Yeah. I did an NBC show. <laughs> I did, like, like, I did a lot of work to watch. How, how old were you? From age 10 to about 20. Uh -huh. um, and I was. And you still trust the same age And you agree with Hell? You trust Hollywood? It's parents. Well, you didn't see what you just said. You, Did I say that? You put words in his mouth. <laughs> Did I say that? Apparently Boy, that not. made a headline right yeah. there. Like it. Yeah, see? <laughs> oh, I, um, see? See that? See how it goes? <laughs> no, I said. You can Guilty. trust the rules in television compared to music. He did say that. That's true. Yeah, right. That is true. Not trust that. Hollywood. <laughs> you know, people Things sliding your child in manila here. envelopes uh, right? yeah. with weird stuff in them. <laughs> that's that's I'm not that's out okay of my mind. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. I want to hear that. That's okay. It's all about the parents. My parents, um, I motivated it, but they were not momagers. They were not, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have that. But I met many kids mm -hmm. who did not have those parents yeah. and were pushing them. And that's why I do believe there's a lot of these kids end up in trouble. Amazing. Yeah. Right. And then when you start to exploit your children, mm -hmm. then you just switch the whole paradigm. Across the line. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Now yeah. the kids are going to be talking to you a little differently than mm, they would because they're not dumb. They can see when mommy and daddy are trying to do this for a certain mm -hmm. reason. It's not that. love That's involved. Really you know? I've had my kids on, uh, on my shows, and yep. I've also had a couple kids' shows, cooking shows. And... Uh, I see that same thing, the momager, and you see some parents are pushing their kids a lot, and the others are just there for the experience. And so, but I do think that there's a lot of things in place. I'm just saying from the TV side of it that, you know, we could only work a few, you know, a certain amount of hours, and then they had school, mm -hmm. and we had yeah. uh, teachers on board, and there were certain requirements about what the kids were eating. You know, I, I believe that there is a certain drive for certain people to do it, yeah. but I think that that should be developed inside of the kid. Mm -hmm. I think the kid yep. should be the one coming forth and saying, I want to do it, and Absolutely. not the parents they, they railroading. Yeah. 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 My, my kids love it. Like, they're around it, and I was like, oh, you can kind of <laughs> tell, and even it's because it's not me. They, there's not a microphone they don't love. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're grabbing it. They're they're right they, 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 are we on yeah. the air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but it's like, all right, have fun with it. Right. It's not a right. well, you, it's got, fun. you gotta keep yeah. it up on everything right. else, too, right? You gotta do good in your schoolwork. Would yeah. you do yeah. a Shark Tank Kids? No, you can't. You just can't. Because... I was developing one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, right? But, but um, you can't, because what are you gonna say? That idea sucks, right? And you just, the worst thing we can do is tell somebody they have something good, they go out and put everything they have in it, and it's horrible. It is a fine line. I, I picked up MasterChef Junior before I left Fox. You know, I said to Gordon, you're gonna have to treat them like adults to get it to work. You just have to be cautious on, so Gordon can still be Gordon, but not really. So he's yeah. right, so it's gotta you be. You gotta really it's a, be. It's a real I, delicate I, I remember your yeah. kids really just well. A, you gotta pay attention yeah. to where they're at and know what kid can handle what level and what language is gonna work in what way and what style and what method. They're smart. If you're in that level as a kid doing that type of competition, we're getting these little chefs that are coming in that can really cook. So mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is they're able to handle, but you just have to really fine, pick yes. how you're gonna talk yeah, at to least, each one. And I will say this yeah. about cooking kids. And again, cooking it's such, kids. Yeah. I call it, right? <laughs> they are, it's, 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 right, it's, it? they are as into it as and as good at it as any kid you've ever seen sing yeah. or dance. Yeah. Yeah. These kids love to cook. Yeah. And so they're enjoying, and it's amazing what they're able to do, to yep. be honest. I and think she's like that. She's 14. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she's they love an it. She's amazing chef. Right. She's been watching cooking shows like yours and everything else. Oh, she's, she's a, a smart a kid. Yeah. She's <laughs> a kid. So she was like young, yeah. and she's been on various network shows, and she's starting to get her little career. And, this is just amazing. I love it. All right, so right now, what's going on in, in the news is a real. We have our first sort of reality stars president, which I know, Mike, you recently That's said. President, you said. Yeah, 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 let's not push it. Sorry. What when did you say? Did you not hear the news? 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 When is this airing again? Horrifying, but but the first yes, reality star candidate. Yeah. And I'm curious if you think what are the sort of skills that work as a reality star that are perhaps working for him as a candidate? Transparency. It, it, or no. the, to appear to be <laughs> Well, no, that's right. That, no, no, the blowing things up, the kind of, the, well, that but, whole, uh, I can do this and I can do that and we're going to destroy this and we're going to destroy that. That's true. And P, it's, and then he gets all of these people going, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the thing where they feel like he's just like me. I know him. I've seen mm -hmm. him on TV. He's nobody, like exactly. my nobody thinks Donald Trump's just no, like no, no, me. No, no, no. He's not talking he's not political. Them. I think he's what they see yeah, is them, right? they he's see the bully on the playground yeah. who's saying, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure nobody kicks your ass. And they're like, we get to hang out with the bully. There's a movie coming, I can tell you right now. I think that's right. I also think there's a thing about 
reality television and being a judge or being a host. When we had J-Lo on Idol, I think she was, no one had ever seen her as her, right? right. And I think that they really feel they know him. Yeah. That th whether they know him, right, they, right? right? But they feel it's different than being an actor. Mm -hmm. Being an actor, you're always playing a role. It's different. There's a wall up. This guy has spent 14 seasons, in addition to his other, room. his other, his other news, you know, everything he's done before that. But people feel like, oh, I know him, and, mm -hmm. I, and he's talking to me. Right, mm -hmm. and and you know what? <laughs> and he's an outsider. And I think That's that is the trend That's this the year. That is yeah. no question about it. All right, it. so Mark, your That's name it. gets uh, yeah, <laughs> thrown in. Yeah, right? <laughs> but is, is there any truth to any of that? And is that appealing? I mean, Chris Saka was recently said that, I mean, you're your yeah, buddy, and uh, <laughs> said that there, there's a future which you will be our president. I mean, I would talk to Donald. He would call me, all this stuff. And um, it, it's it's a different world uh -huh. right now. And I think, like like you guys were saying, that it's not so much that they're all for Donald is that they're all against what's going on right mm -hmm, now right. in Washington, and somebody's looking for an alternative. Right. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on where you're at, it's Donald, right? And Donald plays to his strengths. You know, I call what he's doing the, the Seinfeld campaign, the campaign about nothing, you know? <laughs> because all he does is scream and yell, but like you said, you know, the bully's on my side mm -hmm. now, and nobody else is getting anything done of consequence. Right. And it's like, I've gotten into battles with Donald on Twitter mm -hmm. and other places and on TV and all that kind of stuff, and he's just so easy to fuck with, right? <laughs> he's, just, he's got no sense of humility. He's or got, humor. Or humor, right? Yeah, and that's he's got no Zero. humor whatsoever. Yes. So yeah. that's what makes him so easy to mess uh -huh. with. I did an event, and I said, Donald's just like the guy who walks into a bar, don't say anything to get laid. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows it's true, <laughs> but he won't come back and mess with me, right? He'll go fight whoever else or take on someone else because he knows I can slam him. He's got no sense of humor. Yes. So in terms of me being contacted and all this, it's true, but it's like they know that I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he has that I want. There's nothing. I have no obligations. I'm, I'm, I'm independent. I, I haven't given money to either party. Yep. You know, I can just say what I think and do what I feel. And, and um, but could you be the second uh, reality star con uh, candidate? Yeah, you know, yeah. if you would ask me <laughs> six years ago, four years ago, I would have said hell no, uh -huh. right? But given what's going on and given you know kind of how people feel about everything, you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and I'm in a position where if I wanted to invest in myself to do something, I could. If I wanted to get people behind me to do something, I could. It's just a you know a question of whether or not I can have the greatest impact there sure. or doing what I'm doing. I mean, I anything's for you. Yeah, anything's <laughs> possible. Right? I don't yeah. Anything's yep. possible, I but I'd be... cabinet. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> got a liquor cabinet, right? Kitchen cabinet. <laughs> Kitchen cabinet. I don't liquor cabinet. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the liquor cabinet. I like it. Anything's possible. We're too appointed to the... The liquor uh, cabinet yeah. is crazy, though. We can't just, like... We can't, get, we can't just gloss over that. The liquor cabinet? That's pretty good. I was... <laughs> you know, I'll take you the one you give me. <laughs>A lot of you have other careers here, an actress, an actor, a chef. What's harder to stomach, a, a good or a bad review for a show in which you're acting mm. or a reality show in which you're sensibly playing you? I don't read any of it. Uh, and if I see that it has a, uh, an opinion about me one way or the other, I, I push it away. Yeah? Yeah, I just well, have too much fun doing it. Yeah. First yeah, thing yeah, I was yeah. told when I got in the business, don't read anything. If you live for the compliment, you got to die by the criticism. Yeah, well, exactly. Fair, but... I, I was actually having this conversation with somebody, too, and it's interesting because it's something about art. When people judge art, you take it a little more. Like, if a, if a reality show gets canceled, you'd be like, so what? It's a reality show. Like, uh -huh. like I've done, like, several reality shows that I've only done one season and nobody, they just forget about it because it's just like, oh, that was a reality show. If you do a television show, a, a scripted show or a film that gets tainted, yeah, yeah. people That's are funny. like, ooh, they, they're like, exi <laughs> <laughs> they exile <laughs> you sometimes. <laughs> but it's like a reality show, like, oh yeah, you'll keep going That's until right. one of them becomes yeah, a hit. Something <laughs> sticks, yeah. yeah. Reviews yeah. on reality shows, I've always said this, if you get a good review on a reality show, you've done something wrong. Because <laughs> they don't like the genre, generally speaking, I'm not trying to insult you, but they don't particularly, they much prefer to review a drama or a comedy. And One so, of the great things about the 24-hour news cycle is that whatever is being said about you is going away tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's tomorrow. Right. Yeah, exactly. I remember, because I, I, I Google alert myself. And it's I, dangerous I, Yeah, it is a dangerous thing to, to, right? to do. Right? I kind of cl click on it and then I go away. Thing. But, you know, when, like, I had a show get canceled and for about 26 minutes it was like, <gasps> and then something else got canceled <laughs> or then the Kardashians did something. And it goes away, <laughs> which is so great. Really fast. That is I'm curious, guys, with you, I mean, so perhaps not for shows, would you read Restaurant reviews? 
I mean, you that's, might, you that gets the same thing. Yeah, it happens the same way. And and you have to take it, I really take it from the perspective of where's this coming from? What's this really about? And how's this going to impact me? You were one of the most famous ones of all well, time. Well, when somebody's saying something to me that I can really take and do something with and is reality, mm -hmm then I'm absolutely listening. Mm -hmm. But when somebody's not coming at it from, and they're coming from an ego standpoint or they're coming in an attack way, then I kind of tune that out. Mm. So that's that's really my way about it. I mean, there's a lot of really good information out there. My dad's kind of my filter. My old man comes to my house every morning and says, hey, got to take a look at this. And I'm like, oh, Dad, I don't want to read this today. He's like, no, take a look at it. There's some things here that I want you to see. And so those kind of mm -hmm. things, or that kind of feedback is important. But it really comes about where's the source, what's the timing, and what's mm. the attitude. Sure. How different are you guys from your sort of personalities on television? Oh, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't, don't have do a anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same, you. same guy. Yeah. No, same I'm a girl. dick in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it hates me. And you're so kind on Shark Tank. Exactly. I'm trying to yeah. you know, rehab my image. Yeah. <laughs> are you? I mean, it's funny because people always say, like, the Nick Cannon on America's Got Talent is completely different from the Nick Cannon on Wild and Out. And it's just like, but it's the same person. I'm it's just, in context. I'm just speaking exactly. to a different audience. Sure. If I'm sure. at a pool, you're not at a pool party in a tuxedo. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm in a suit on NBC, <laughs> you know, but on MTV, I might be in a t-shirt. Yeah. On America's Got Talent, you now have Simon Cowell. He is, I mean, that is a, a, a persona that is so sort of perfected. Um, he is arguably one of the greatest reality TV personas of yeah. all time. Is that who that guy is? Yeah, that's definitely who that guy is. And yeah. he does it so well. Like, he knows how to engage with people. There's a reason why people love him, people, or people love to hate him at times, because he speaks his mind, but it's true to who he actually is. And, I did see him do a contrived moment. Really? You know, when that, remember that woman, who the Scottish woman who sang so beautifully? Susan Boyd. Right, right, right. right. Uh -huh. So she comes out on stage, and the audience is, like, literally booing her, because she's ugly. <laughs> They're like, going, boo, boo. And he's like, looks at her. And, you know, he's contrived. He's like going. And she starts to sing, and he acted it. He was like. <laughs> but he <laughs> already knew, yeah. I was like, Dude, you are. But that's what I say, he's that was fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I know when he knows one, exactly what he's doing. He knows how to do it because he has to do that. You, those are 16 hour days. He has yeah. to probably do that eight or nine times. So he does, contri that he does contrive. Like, oh, yeah. You know, you know oh, when yeah. someone comes out and they're gonna, you know, they're like, okay, this lady has a good voice, but she's a four or a five. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or something <laughs> in that sense. And we're like, yeah. okay, how are we gonna play this? And it's not, it's not contrived in the sense because I guarantee you, if that audience would have started booing or laughing at her, even if she had a good voice, it would have been a different outcome. Mm -hmm. So the audience had no yep. idea that yep. she was going to have. Really, this I don't know. I don't buy <laughs> so that. So no. why would the audience? I think the, I, Why would the audience I think it was know? No, but I think it was edited. Oh, of course. Well, too. But that's what I'm saying. Sure. There's 16 hour days, yeah. and you see an hour of it. So if I'm in the edit and I got a face of Simon going like that, as the editor, I'm going to use. We that. go through the same thing, right? So yeah. we start shooting eight in the morning. They just bring in deal after deal yeah. after deal, and like by the end of the day, like oh, before this next deal comes up, wake up, motherfuckers, right? You know, you got you yeah. got to. <laughs> <laughs> bring some energy, right? Yes. You just looked at 12 deals and you've got to re-energize. And so, you sure. know, I could see how that would happen. Do you so. watch the show and go, they used my face here and that From wasn't that what I was thinking at all? Oh, I see. Like yeah. show I, you do like Don't tell anybody, and... but I rarely watch oh, the show because I hate to watch myself. All right, yeah. so, oh, Mike, things. you obviously have to pick, I mean, for, for a long time, you've been picking hosts and, and, and sure. judges and whatnot. I mean, 500 Questions is, is one right. recent example. And how do you think about, okay, what, what makes the most sense? Do I always want a Simon Cowell or no, I don't want? No, no. So there's difference between a host and a, a judge. 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 That's true. And someone on a reality show, right? So, like, I put Simon Cowell and Gordon Ramsay in the same bucket, mm -hmm. which is they're both really talented, mm -hmm. and the reason people like them is because they are authentic. Mm -hmm. I think Mark's like that. Where you will forgive a bad day or an angry comment or if you know they're real. Mm -hmm. If it feels to you they're coming from a real place. So when you're looking for certain things, you know, a host of a game show is very different than, you know, someone that's You don't want a mean host. Right, right, right. right. No. It's not going to work, right? right. It's, it's not mean, it's but candor. <laughs> Tonight, the smartest people in the country are about to play the toughest game ever devised. No saves, no helps, no multiple choice. Our geniuses are ready, the pressure is on. It's day one. Will anybody be able to answer 500 questions? But as long as you're authentic, as long as you know, and, and, and Guy, you're authentic, I think there's a sense of, 
You're you know, a good man. Nick's more of a host. Nick's a host. He's calling me not off. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're completely but is it game of no. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. No, That's exactly what he's no, saying. No, no, it's different. I'll take it. You know, like I will say, he's he's just he's being himself, being a host. It's different. Yeah. It's a different yep. thing than being a judge. It's a different thing. That's all mm -hmm. I'm saying. What is it in the, in the food world? Well, when I take uh, people walk up and they go, okay, you went to this place and then you went and you had the burger and then you took the, you didn't really like it. I said, you know what? If I didn't like it, I won't bullshit you. If I don't like it, you're either not going to see it on TV or mm -hmm. I'll say something like, it was good. I mean, there is, this is off. The, this is the best. And when I'm saying it, that's, I'm really that. I'm not a TV person. I'm a chef that happened to get an extra paycheck going on to you know, do TV shows. So I don't have anything else to give you. I mean, I'm, right. what you see is what you get. I mean, I've known a couple of these yeah. guys. And yeah, I mean, Mark, you've known, we've known a few years. I act the same way all on, the time. off. Yeah, sure. Time. Yeah. And that's what I tell about Cuba. That's why I was going to yeah. put him in, yeah. in charge of liquor cabinet, right? Yeah. <laughs> Margarita Day. <laughs> Crown this. Uh, and I say that with love. Guys, you know what does it take to be a, fo a, a food star, like a star in that world today? And, and is talent as a chef even important in, in the reality sort of space? You gotta have the goods. I mean, you gotta be a chef. You, you gotta important. know. You gotta know how to. You gotta know what it is. You gotta know how it's made. You gotta know what it tastes. You gotta do all those components, and mm. then you have to be able to project it. So it's it's kind of anybody that's in an artist field. You have to be great at what mm -hmm. you do to be able to go try to become great at anything yep. else. So the foundation has to be true. Mastery. And right. I see mastery. That, that, yeah. That's right. That's what I love about the cooking shows is that these guys, even though I'm not tasting it, there, you guys and girls are uh, really know what they're doing. Yeah, we yeah. break we break it down. I bridge things because a chef will be able to. He'll tell me this piece, and then he'll tell me that piece, and he'll segment it. Well, I know what it takes to make the dish, so he'll tell me this, and I'll say, and then we'll put it in the mix, and then we'll put it in the mixer, and then you know, and then he gives his piece. So there's, but it's how everybody. I listen. I watch a show all the time with my kids, and you know what? You pick them up where they're falling down. Right. When they can't yeah. describe what they're wanting to say or how they're feeling, you give them that. You know, it's yeah. it's it's mad. You, you call it on. What's the hardest part about doing what you do in this uh, oh, world? Oh, not there's nothing hard about it. No, it's pu it's pure joy. <laughs> I love it. It's you know I get to be social, but and I love I don't like going to parties, but I love hosting them. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. great. It's like hey hey, I get a little bit of intimate connection, and then I go to my perch. Uh -huh. and then I'm out. So and no I'm, one yeah. had to convince yeah, exactly. you. No one had to twist your <laughs> I'm kind of like Jay too. Gatsby watching <laughs> a party, <laughs> you know, sipping a scotch. Oh, Crab was the one, and Jason pointed to his crotch. <laughs> I, I would say, go ahead. Go on a family <laughs> television show. But I, 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 there's nothing hard or challenging about it at I love all. It. Just learning the game. Sometimes I'm, you know, I'm not the brightest light on the Christmas. <laughs> it is a party. <laughs> it's totally it's a, party. a party, and it's a great time. Mark, how hard was it to be convinced to do Shark Tank in the first place? Yeah, Burnett just asking me. I was like, business show, and literally, I think I said earlier, I didn't think the show would last. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd been bounced around. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll find some good deals and it'll be a unique experience, which is what I care about. And then the next thing you know, it's just like a juggernaut. I want to thank you guys all for your offers. But Mark, we got a deal. Let's do this. Wow. Congratulations, Glenn. I'm really you. proud of you, man. Congrats. Thank you, you so much. Me, me, I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew you were doing it because I knew that you'd be impressed with yeah, him. Yeah, I was. I, yeah. I'm really real. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Bye, Bye Bobby. What's the most money you've lost on a on a Shark Tank contestant? Two hundred grand, I think. I think out of seventy one, I've closed three are out of business, four are out of business and aren't smart enough to realize it. <laughs> and then on the other side, probably ten, twelve are making a half a million or a million dollars a year or more. I've had a bunch of them pay me back, you know, ten x. Huh? Yeah. So, Do you I mean, stay in touch with great. these people? I mean, oh is no, that no, part absolutely. Of the are you kidding me? Yeah. Are they Cuban calling gave you? me some money and like yeah. I never heard from. Them. No, I, every week I get my reports, or every week yeah. or two I get reports from them. Bad news first and yeah I, I have to help them yeah and they call you and they want advice and they want always email like oh. yeah because otherwise my phone would not stop ringing but yeah always but uh, and i have like 15 people who work with me and help me that, um mm -hmm. no just that just work on them once i've closed the deal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so um yeah it's that's the hard part about doing the show the show actually you know three weeks in june two weeks in september you know long days but we just crank them all out it's after you close the deal that's when the work starts and sure. so that's the hard part all right ll 
hosting lip sync precludes you from actually participating. If you could, who would you challenge and what uh, what song would you do? Well, first of all, I wouldn't tell you because my competitors would right. be watching uh -huh. and they would know <laughs> and they would count it at my strategy Safe with us. 100 Secret years escape. early. Don't you so know, I wouldn't do that. This is a battle legend, but like, he's never <laughs> lost a battle in you know? real life. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that. But what I would say is I would love to see some, some world leaders on lip sync battle. Uh -huh. like, yeah. like, yeah. I'd love yeah. to see George Trump, right? W. Bush no, and, and you, Bill oh. Clinton go at it. <laughs> Singing, I'm a soul man. Uh -huh. I'm a soul man. <laughs> <laughs> did he did it did it. Be funny. Uh, you know, why don't you, you come on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invite Donald Trump to sing. I want to be a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. I want to be a billionaire. Because <laughs> you know he does. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Despot. Yeah. How much easier has it gotten as the show has gotten more successful to get people to come on? No, you know it. You can't, it, it never gets easy because you still have to be respectful. Just because the show is successful and it's growing doesn't mean that you can like snap your fingers and people just want to be on your show. Good. There are people that have called and asked to be on it, but at the same time, sometimes it takes a little coaxing because people right. don't want to look stupid, mm -hmm. don't want to look crazy. They're, they're scared to put themselves out there. It makes them nervous. It's, it's sensitive, scary. you know, yeah. it's a yeah. little scary. So it's not, you know, just like, woohoo! You know, How much of your in. job or that coaxing is a piece of it? it? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I would say is that if you come on our show, you are risking a 99.9% .9 chance of looking like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And they go in knowing that. <laughs> and so, you I was great on your show, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you have to have that conversation with them. One of the biggest them. idiots we ever had. <laughs> I exist, I haven't been and on that's yet. the best. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to do the show for that reason. You would be. Yeah. Right? No, it's, exactly. it's, um, uh, it, it's about having fun. Same like, it's not true. about... You know, there are a lot yeah. of people who are competitive, mm -hmm. but for the most part, for me, it's a successful show if, like, a fight breaks out, if somebody cheats and I get to call them on it. That's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, we really, everything stays on in the show. It takes us about an hour and a half, two hours to shoot it, so we, there's very little cut out. And that's one of the things I love is when, like, mayhem ensues, and I just stand back and, and I go, <laughs> And just wind it up a little moment. bit worse. Yeah, I really, know what you throw do. a little something yeah. out there, yeah. It's coaxing a piece of, of, of the job it's, for you? It's the worst part of the job. I wish that they, they hire these people called talent bookers, and I don't know <laughs> what they do. <laughs> because, I mean, and that, like, specifically on Wild and Out, it's a show I created, I'm mm -hmm. a producer, and... I literally have to, I'm still, I'm gonna, after this is over, I'm gonna beg LL to come and do the show. <laughs> it's like, you, it's a fine line of like, these are your friends, these are your peers. But then again, everyone has a schedule. Every, you have to be in the right part of the cycle where they're promoting something. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But then everybody's looking at you like, this is your show, and you said this was your buddy. What happened? Yeah. And they've got a lot of people in their ear yeah. telling them not to do not it. To, especially because yeah, everybody a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Did blah, blah, blah. anyone yeah. tell you guys not to do it? To actually, whether be on it or whether to host. Oh, all no. the time. No. I was funny for uh, America's Got Talent when they offered me the job. I was promoting a film at the Sundance Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I was in, Where? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, hey. And they were like, wow. and they were, they were like, yo, this money offer came through. And I was actually the, the way it even came about. I was pitching another show that I was producing. I was never thinking mm -hmm. about it. And they were like. You're promoting a film, and we're trying to win awards. Tell me one uh -huh. award-winning actor you know that hosts a reality show. Like, I don't care about all uh -huh. of that. I want to have, I want to do what I want to do and have fun. <laughs> it's one of the best decisions <laughs> I ever had. <laughs>
Interestingly enough, I wouldn't say he was definitely a teacher, but it was uh, my martial arts instructor, Master mm. Wilson. When I, I've taken martial arts since I was five, mm. and it's interesting because you know he was like literally like the stereotypical guy that was just like very stern and like the punch me in my belly type of thing. Like, <laughs> any, but it was like those principles that I didn't even know that I was you know consuming at a at five, like yeah. integrity, perseverance, and mm -hmm. hard work, those things last with you forever. And they it's do. like, oh man, I didn't. Stick it out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, I use those same principles today and even have my kids in martial arts now because of those things. Because you just think you're having fun kicking and punching, yep. but then like, it's actually making you very disciplined and, and putting you in. Like, showing up on yeah. time. Sure. Yeah. I had that same yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. What were you like as kids? I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, 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 there's right. no question about it. There's no doubt about it. Honest, there are people who knew me in school. Everybody recognizes me. I never go. Anywhere. <laughs> We were just going there. Shocker. Yo. Exactly the same. Same beard and everything. And, yeah. and almost, and the same height, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, but the truth is, that's the truth. I, I have not changed over the years, uh, and people seem to. What kind of kids were you guys? Uh, I was uh, probably a little more shy version of what you're seeing today. Um, uh, but basically, I've been kind of the same person, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little more, I have more confidence now. I was the same way. I'm same, just a grown-up version of it. I don't know how much grown up, but taller. And uh, but I was an entrepreneur as a kid. I was I was always into business. I had some kind of business going at some time. And uh, I had a pretzel cart uh, that I had on the back of a three-wheel bike. My dad helped me build it in fifth grade, and I sold hot pretzels. We didn't have those on the West Coast back uh -huh. then. That was like a big thing. Where were at on uh, the West Coast? Here in Northern California. Right, well, Northern. Southern, but Northern yeah. California. It was called the Awesome Pretzel Cart. And my foundation, <laughs> we make the carts now and give them to kids for fundraising projects. That's but cool. Now, it wasn't the money. It was like, I like making people happy. I like cooking. I cooked at a young age. I cooked for my parents when I was 10. So mm. same guy, same, same, what she's what you get. A little fatter. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll give you all you need to know about my um, school days. I was a lot shorter. I, I didn't grow until after I really left high school and a lot heavier. I had, um, I was playing baseball one day and I ran into a bike and a broke these two teeth at the bottom, and my parents made me get silver caps, right? Oh. I, yeah, me metallic, because we couldn't work. I had big glasses, oh, right? Geez. Yeah, so I- it, it like was, a gangster. No, trust me, no. no. No one was paying, no one knew who I was, and so- Woody. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I kind of grew up, it's so bad, like when people went back and found my high school yearbook, uh -huh. and they circled who I thought I, they thought I was, they circled the wrong person, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you were yeah. happy about it, you didn't correct them. No, I was fine with it, but still, yeah, it was a big change. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if everyone at the table could reboot a reality show that they loved, what would they do? That's incredible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> oh, that's right. What would you guys do? Yeah, I didn't even know that. Oh, Mutual uh, of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. <laughs> uh, 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 just the song it. alone yeah. is yeah. enough. <laughs> How did it go? Mutual. Uh, <laughs> singing now. This, this things are really gone wrong. I mean, I'd like to just watch the intro of the Wild World of Sports. Just the thrill oh, yeah, of yeah, victory. Right, right, right. And the agony of defeat. The guy yes. with the guy on the skis falling. Wipe it out. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just want to watch that. Like, I'd like to see that right now. Just to uh -huh. see you know, it was it cool, too, that back in the day, I actually got an opportunity to bring it back. And I'm, uh, it's Yo! on TV Raps. You know what I'm yeah. So we're going to oh, be cut. Awesome. He was on the first episode, the pilot of it. They went on tour, and I took that same concept and got the tour bus and stuff like that. Huh, so. I'd like that. I'd like to do cribs, but kitchens. Nice. Yeah. Kitchens. Yeah. 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 Just going to see in gangster kitchens because I know he's got to have. Oh one. hell no! Oh, Are you kidding me? I've got a microwave. Eighteen <laughs> chefs and the whole. <laughs> no, I mean, no, it looks like a great idea. I should buy that. But you know what? I mean, touring it. You know, bring Robin Leach back. Let him do the intro for it. Right, right, Leach is the man. I love it. All right, so Arnold Schwarzenegger obviously is taking over The Apprentice, and he has to come up with a catchphrase that rivals your fired. Got any for him? He won't be back. back. No, 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 that's easy. Hasta la vista, baby. Be back. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't be back. Yeah. You're terminated. Can we get any more clever for him? Come on. I know he said recently said. Let's get back to business on some place. So yes. I know he's using that. I don't know if that's, obviously, that's not the firing. I don't think that's the firing, yes. <laughs> I'm hoping that they're trying to come up with something that's not as obvious as the ones we have. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm so hoping. So do we want to give Luckily, them any ideas? Know, it's not as exciting. Anything that you say <laughs> in the accent. <laughs> <laughs> anything in the accent is going to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Holla back. <Yeah. laughs> Holla, Holla back. back. Holla back. <laughs> I love it. I think we've done it. Thank you guys all. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that flew cool. by. Yeah, that cool. Thanks for, Thanks for having, having us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. 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 Cheers.